Welcome back to another video, folks. Today I wanted to talk about the importance of enjoying the process of starting a farm. Before we get into the video, please make sure to leave a comment and like it, as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already daily harvests of tomatoes and peppers right now lots of sauces to make we've got lots of edible mushrooms in these woods <clears throat> including some species of bolete but an easy way to tell a lot of the boletes if they're edible or not is if you rub your finger on the pores on the underside and it stains blue like that then it's no good to eat so have to keep looking this is one of my favorite times of year when late summer sets in and the goldenrod, asters, all these late summer and fall wildflowers just start peeking out. I'm up here on this clearing on the ridge on the high point of the property. And historically it's been cleared and bush hogged we went out and planted chestnuts in here. There's one looking quite good. But it's been amazing to see all the oaks and persimmons and poplars, cherry trees, a lot of really great hardwood species just coming up and putting on three, four, five feet of growth in one year. So eventually we'll be able to kind of connect these two sections of woods with more of a savanna like matrix here selecting for primarily the fruiting and masting trees so one day we'll be looking out at grazing ruminants among persimmons oaks and chestnuts up here on this beautiful ridge top i wanted to talk today about enjoying the process of starting something new. And in our context, that's a farm. And it's a farm business that we're projecting out, not just later into this year, into next year, but decades down the line. And that's led to a bit of a shift in my thinking, being in this position where I've started to make decisions and approach projects and just my thinking on more of a decades long basis, playing the long game. And I'll tell you, after spending most of my 20s kind of enriched in a culture of immediacy and what I call a bit of a microwave culture where folks today, especially young folks in my experience, want very quick results and we're kind of conditioned nowadays that if we don't get immediate results and quick gratification, then we quit and move on to the next thing, or we expect to be experts and masters in a field very quickly. And, you know, throughout all of human history, there's been the pattern of mentorship and long-term apprenticeship to learn things and become masters of them. And I think that opening oneself to the humility of, of being a beginner for quite a long time and just having that mindset of always learning, at least for me, has been really liberating and made me feel uh, much more sure of my decision making and much more at peace with working on the minutia because all of the little things that we work on day to day can feel tedious at times and it's extremely challenging to start a farm as anyone will tell you there's a lot of obstacles and, and challenges and, and so much learning to do but been really just enjoying the process and what I mean by that is just taking it a day at a time what I've noticed is it's incredible what you can accomplish if you just focus on the day or the week in front of you with a plan for the long term in the back of your mind, but 
chipping away at each little task one by one, it really adds up. A lot of folks who have come out to the farm have remarked um, that they're impressed with how much we've accomplished. Really just the two of us uh, in about nine months of being here. And from within, sure, we've been hard at work, um, but it's been a very manageable load. And I think a big part of that is we've just been able to chip away at it bit by bit and really just focus on what's in front of us and, and mentally not get carried away into other things we wish we might be spending our time doing. Cat is curious about me. Or, you know, wanting to see our long-term results immediately, not being discouraged by things that don't go well. This mindset, in my experience, has also freed me from some of the anxieties of day-to-day -day challenges. If we have a bed of vegetables that doesn't germinate well, or say a batch of chickens that doesn't perform as well as the last, sure, those are things to address and adjust and work on production methods to, to dial things in and refine those processes. But since it's all within the context of this larger vision of this place, that's going to take a long time to develop and that's not going to come immediately. Those little, you know, losses or learning experiences haven't felt stressful because I know looking back in five, 10 years, those aren't the things that we're going to remember. And, you know, taking my own pride out of it, it's okay if I do a bad job growing a bed of carrots you know that's that's just a learning opportunity and I think you know it's uh, natural and I think it's normal but maybe not the best way to go about it for farmers to internalize uh, production issues as shame we're dealing with a lot of different circumstances and elements and all kinds of things that really affect things outside of our control and so, yeah, we want to do our best to produce the best and most food that we can within our means. But it's also okay if things don't go perfectly all the time, especially if you have a longer term vision and are always kind of having that as a North Star to work towards. This is Cedar. He's been our beloved homestead farm cat for a while now. We think we're in charge, but it's actually this guy. A lot of farmers starting out talk about burnout and it's a real challenge. I mean, we have things we have to do every single day here and, you know, we, we sacrifice, I suppose, some of the other things we like doing this time of year, especially when there's a lot going on on the farm. But I think a big part of what contributes to burnout is this false notion that we've learned from social media and you know all the other inputs we have that we should expect quick results. I think anything worth doing is gonna take a while to achieve and it takes daily routine practice and effort to refine our skills and refine our mentality and our emotional connection to our work so that we can continue doing it. You know, that's, that's a big piece of this. We don't wanna just pop it in the microwave and expect instantaneous results um, without that process behind it. I mean, I see the process of building anything, building a, a house, building a business, building a farm, building a relationship as the foundation. You can't have the meaningful relationship. You can't have the enduring farm while skipping that process of learning and ma making mistakes and, you know, finding things that work through trial and error and meeting mentors and talking with them and taking the, the good days with the bad. It's not all going to be perfect every day. And it also doesn't have to be extremely challenging every day. But if we are striving to avoid or circumvent that process that in my mind takes years, if not decades, to really 
become enriched in, then the foundation is faulty. I think a lot of the information out there these days through books and videos is incredible and it's gotten so many folks to get into farming that might not otherwise have. But I think a downside to it is there being somewhat of a get rich quick type of mentality where we see someone doing something on YouTube and they're talking about, oh yes, um, it's very profitable very quickly. You can get started on rented land for no cost and all these things. And you know, there's truth to those production models, but I want more people to understand that behind each of those success stories, there's years and years building up to that point and years and years of mistakes and errors and yeah, learning. It doesn't come like that. And, you know, that's such an important part of the process. So much so that nowadays when I make a mistake, it's something I want to address and not repeat, but it doesn't cause me to feel anxiety or shame or any of these things that are common to feel when we mess up in this context. Rather, it, it brings me gratitude because I know that it's part of this beautiful process that's building the foundation of an enduring livelihood and an enduring business and an enduring relationship to the plants and animals of this land. Got a couple of boys in here. We introduced sheep to the land a couple weeks ago. And we have one ram and a weather, which is a castrated male. We'll introduce the ram to the ewes in about a month's time. And the weather is our little companion animal. So if we ever have to isolate sheep, such as in the case right now with the ram, this weather is around to, to keep them company because sheep are social animals. They get lonely by themselves. So they've got a good situation here. We have them in the shade here now, grazing throughout this part of the pasture and straight in front there is the hill with the blueberry plantings and this fall when things cool down our plan is to strip graze them in between the rows of blueberries and cut that down it's a bit too steep to mow on that hill <clears throat> and yeah we're excited to integrate the sheep into the landscape and let them do some of the work Turkeys are happy, growing quite nicely. We've got plenty of space in here. There's a whole extra room for them to spread out. And they've got about three more weeks in the brooder and we're putting them out on pasture. It's all fine and good to be okay with mistakes and learn from them and enjoy the process, but we're also running a business and we have a bottom line that we're wanting to respect and turn a profit in this first year and pay back the startup costs for this season with the enterprises we have right now. And I think part of what is so beneficial in my mind of starting with mixed enterprises on a small scale is it really spreads the risk out a bit. We had some issues with production in the summer market garden this year. We had a really rainy July and things got a bit saturated. And that was okay because the chickens and the pork have been doing very well for us. And so by spreading that risk out, we're not putting all our eggs in the basket of one enterprise. And it takes some of that pressure off getting started. Now, do we want those types of things to happen? No, but as we refine and develop our practices here in this place, in this climate, then, you know, it'll continue to get better over time. But here in this first year, we don't have to worry so much about if little things go wrong here and there because we're compensating by having multiple enterprises. So yeah, it's quite common to experience stress and burnout starting a farm and I don't fault anyone for that. I think it's normal, particularly if you're coming into it without much of a background in agriculture. But I think a lot of it comes down to mindset too and expectations. And in my experience, shifting my expectations from 
short-term, uh, you know, quick success and wanting to see results immediately into a decades long approach has really helped. It helps reduce any kind of frustration or stress around the little things day to day that might not go right. Because I know looking back in the long term that those little things, you know, we won't even remember them and we ought to not stress about those things. I think having a holistic context, and I'm referring specifically to the work of the Savory Institute, getting really clear on your values and how to integrate your values into a systematic decision-making framework is critical. It's been critical in our experience and has offered a lot of clarity and has continued to be our North Star in guiding where we're going in this life. So those are some thoughts I've been having just rumbling around about taking it day by day and enjoying the process and really taking the pride and stress out of farming because we're doing it for the long term and we can't take things too seriously as long as we're meeting our needs and working towards building something meaningful and effective. Thanks again for watching the video and look forward to seeing you next time.